You have one new message. Hello, I'm 69 and a human being. I'm male and my name is irrelevant. I am a U.S. citizen. I've been around the block so many times that my tires are bald. I only know these independent news sites, such as the Real News Network, because of Chris Hedges. One day I hope to have the courage he has. He's my favorite, other than my wife. I formidably advocate the railroaders. It is imperative that you take a stand. The minority cabal of profligates won't stop until they have it all. Just like Mary Trump's description of Donald, too much and never enough. The cabal doesn't care about you. They don't care. You must be brave and take a stand. They don't care about you. Hello, I'm Gabriella, a UPS teamster of eight and a half years. I was in package for five years, um, delivering, uh, you know, out of a small package delivery trucks. And I was a part-timer for three and a half years, um, very involved in my union, um, in rank and file action and, you know, rank and file education. And yeah, thanks for having me. Hi, I am Zach, and I am speaking from the hunting grounds, the trade exchange point and migration route for the Apache, Comanche, Kiowa, and Osage nations, as well as the traditional home, the Caddo Nation and Wichita tribes. Today, 39 tribal nations dwell in the state of Oklahoma as the result of settler and colonial policies that were designed to assimilate Native people. Uh, and I bring all that up because I want to um, acknowledge, honor, and respect the diverse people who have formed my understanding of what solidarity, mutual aid, what they look like, and how we um, how we embody those values in the midst of struggle. So I've been at UPS as a Teamster for about five years. I'm a second generation Teamster out of uh, local 886 in Oklahoma City. Hey, I'm Steve. I'm a local Teamster out of... Uh the mid-atlantic i've been teamster for about just under nine years um first union job i just got into uh more union stuff after the last contract that was forced upon ups and uh now i'm here all right well welcome everyone to another episode of working people a podcast about the lives jobs dreams and struggles of the working class today Brought to you in partnership with In These Times Magazine and The Real News Network, produced by Jules Taylor, and made possible by the support of listeners like you. So as y'all heard, uh, we've got a very special and, um, you know, frankly, quite urgent panel today. And I'm, I'm really um, honored to be joined by Steve, Gabriella, and Zach Three Teamsters uh, who have um, worked for uh, collectively many years um, in package delivery for UPS. And, uh, you know, this is a, a, an episode that we've been wanting to do all summer. Um, and folks have been asking us to, uh, you know, record an episode on this um, because we've all been hearing the reports about heat and the unbearable working conditions that folks like Steve, Gabriella, and Zach have been going through. Uh, package um, carriers, letter carriers across the board, not just at UPS, but folks are really, really going through it. As uh, the climate crisis gets worse, as the heat waves get hotter, there was just a new goddamn report saying that the sort of middle corridor, like most of the middle of the country, is going to be experiencing heat of like 130 degrees in the next 25 years. And, you know, while that all sounds terrible, we have to remember that folks are still working through all of that, right? As hot as it was this summer, not just here in the U.S., but I mean, Jesus, the, the entire global map was like, 
you know, blistering red and orange for most of the summer in India and Pakistan and in, in, you know, parts of Africa and the Caribbean, South America, it, it's getting hot. And a lot of working people are, you know, through no fault of their own, are having to bear the brunt of that. You know, we farm workers are absolutely boiling in the heat. Um, package deliverers, like we said, uh, are, you know, driving around in these metal hot boxes that reach temperatures of 150 degrees in there. And they're expected to work with no air conditioning. Um, you guys remember a few episodes ago, uh, we spoke to a dollar store worker in Louisiana, uh, Kenya Slaughter, who revealed to us that um, they don't even control the air conditioning in their own stores. So when they are suffering blistering heat waves and they're sweating their asses off while trying to work a Dollar General with like one or two people, the air conditioning for that store is being controlled by a corporate headquarters in another state. Like this is a real systemic um, problem that working people are dealing with um, across industries and the way that we are headed right now with the climate crisis, it is only going to get worse. And so we wanted to convene this panel um, to talk about, you know, what workers are going through, um, what folks out there listening need to understand about the working conditions um, that folks like Steve, Gabriella and Zach deal with on a day to day basis, um, what can be done about it what is being done about it, and what we can all do to help to ensure that um, workers are not subjected to inhumane uh, working conditions that are dangerous and even deadly. People do die from this stuff. Like, we're not, we're not kidding around here. And just to sort of really uh, put a fine point on that, I'm going to read a, a couple of passages from a piece that just came out this week. Uh, at the New York Times, um, New York Times is not always um, knock it out of the park to put it nicely, but I mean, I but thought it this, is the paper of record. It is the paper of record, and you know, I think it is significant that they did cover this. Um, and I'm going to read from a piece um, that was written by Livia Albeck Ripka, titled "UPS Drivers Say Brutal Heat Is Endangering Their Lives." So Livia writes, "Quote: As blistering heat waves swept across the United States this summer." Breaking temperature records and placing millions under heat advisories and warnings, workers have continued to deliver America's packages for a variety of carriers, often in trucks that have no cooling mechanisms for drivers. Some UPS workers have shared photographs that show thermometer readings of up to 150 degrees in the backs of their trucks. Now, a string of heat-related illnesses among the drivers has renewed calls to improve their working conditions. Quote, they're vomiting. Their bodies are shutting down, said Dave Reeves, the president of Local 767, a Texas local of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, which represents 350,000 UPS workers across the country. He added, quote, it's awful, end quote. Government records show that the problem is not isolated. Since 2015, at least 270 UPS and United States Postal Service drivers have been sickened and in many cases hospitalized from heat exposure. Dozens of workers for other delivery companies, including FedEx, have also suffered from heat exhaustion, according to the records, and a handful of drivers have also died in the past few years. According to the Teamsters, heat-related injuries, illnesses, and deaths among drivers are severely underreported, end quote. So that's what we're here to talk about today. And again, I could not be more grateful to Steve, Gabriella, and Zach um, for being willing to come on and chat with us. Folks um, may you know recognize a, a familiar voice here because Zach has actually been on the show before, and, and he was one of the amazing workers who submitted uh, kind of audio testimony during the first few months of COVID-19 when we did that big, you know, two part, six hour compilation of testimonies from workers talking about what they were going through in that really horrible time when no one knew what was going on. Everyone was scared. Um, so it's 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 just a gift. And, and, and I would just wanted to acknowledge up top that, you know, if you go back and listen to that and how scared we all were. I think it's worth, you know, stopping and recognizing and being grateful for hearing Zach's voice again, knowing that, you know, uh, life 
continues and that, you know, I'm really, really grateful that we're all able to be here today to talk about this. And I also just want to, you know, make a, a, a disclaimer up top, right, that, you know, we are all here um, to discuss this important issue. And I want everyone on this panel to feel comfortable and able to, you know, say what, you know, the, say their piece and, um, and, and not have to worry about uh, anything else. And so I just wanted to make it clear up top that everyone here is, you know, speaking as, you know, a, a, an individual worker, they're speaking about what they have gone through. No one here is um, speaking as a, you know, representative, um, you know, or speaking for, you know, a larger membership. I think that what we're going to talk about here, um, you know, is, is going to be recognizable to a lot of workers, but I don't uh, want to give the the sort of false impression here that, you know, like we, anyone here is speaking on behalf of the Teamsters or a specific local. We are, you know, speaking as fellow workers dealing with a real huge problem that we all need to acknowledge and address. So in that vein, enough from me, enough table setting. Um, I wanted to start, um, you know, before we really start digging into uh, that that question of heat and, and the brutal working conditions that UPS drivers are enduring, especially now in the summer, I was wondering if we could go around the table and just sort of familiarize or refamiliarize um, listeners with you all and, and just sort of like get a bit of a snapshot of um, who you are, um, and, and the kind of work that you've been doing at UPS. So, you know, on the normal show, we like to really go deep into people's backstories and, and how they came to be the people they are, how they came to do the work they do. So like maybe like a, a condensed version of that, just so we get to know the three of y'all a bit more. So can we talk a bit about you and, and how you got into this work and, and, and I guess, um, you know, what that work has entailed in your time at UPS? My name is Gabriella. I live in the southwestern part of the United States. And one thing about the Southwest is it's very, very hot. Um, you know, I think, Max, you touched on so many issues that I want to talk about, like climate change, um, the, the heat in the trucks, how bad it gets in the back, um, you know, that this affects all workers that work outside. Uh, a little bit about me up front, um, you know, UPS worker for eight and a half years. I spent five years in the summers of package car uh, delivering in that heat. Uh, it's unbearable. Uh, I don't know if I personally can't handle it as well as other people can. Um, but I just, I mean, last year I was really considering just like walking off. Like I couldn't handle it anymore. It gets so, especially where I'm from, like, it's so dry and it's so hot. Um, three years ago, I bought a thermometer and I put it in the back of my truck and it maxes out at 127 degrees. And the first day I used it, it maxed out at 127. Like I couldn't, it was above 127. I had no idea um, how hot and I had to get a new one. Um, anyway, but to uh, my husband, he's a mail carrier. Uh, so we both work outside in the uh, excruciating heat, doing physical jobs. Um, but uh, yeah, I know a little bit about me. Um, I my dad was a teamster. He wasn't like a long term teamster, but uh, he uh, when I started at UPS, he told me you know stick with it. He said that he wished he had. He actually unfortunately quit in 1997, right at the strike. Um, when he first told me that story, I thought, oh my god, dad, did you scab? Um, but no, he did it. He, uh, the strike happened and I don't think he really understood what was going on. And he was like, I guess I don't have a job anymore. And I was like, cool. Yeah, that's, that's the right move. If you're not going to hang out at the picket line, don't cross it. You may as well just get another job, I guess. Um, so I'm technically a second generation teamster. Um, but anyway, I come from like a fairly like non-union background. Um, my dad's in trucking, um, and my mom did like service work jobs and we always had, uh, like both my parents had non-union jobs for the most part. Um, and then when I started working at UPS, like truly having a union job and being represented by the Teamsters entirely changed my perspective, entirely changed like who I am in my core, um, gave me um, like a great sense of like purpose in my life um, that like we have the real ability to fight for working class people. Uh, and I think that that's something I could never give up. Um, I also literally could never work a non-union job because every time I have, they fired me. <laughs> so <laughs> once you become union, it's like impossible to go back. You just have too much uh, 
<laughs> too much dignity, I think. Uh, but yeah, no, that's that's the bit about me. All right, this is Zach. Uh, I guess it's my turn. Um, so before I came to UPS, uh, I worked in nonprofits. I worked in the nonprofit sector for about 10 years um, for Habitat for Humanity, most recently um, in Cleveland County. Uh, and we were putting people in homes Um before that, I, I ran the vocations program, an education program um, called START at the local homeless shelter here in Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, and I loved that. Um, before that, uh, it was case managing homeless families and, and people who, who have to live out in this heat, like all the time, right? So that is part of my perspective, I guess, when I come to uh, when I came to UPS, I, I went to UPS because um, a good union job meant stability and security um, for my family. Uh, I had my dad's um, example to look at and how he took care of seven kids. And uh, when I married into three kids and had two kids and adopted two kids and then had seven of my own, uh, having a union job made a whole lot of sense. Um, and uh, and so although I loved what I was doing in the nonprofit world, it turned out that um, I could make more money by delivering cardboard boxes. Um, and that's what I needed to do. That's what I needed to do for my family. They needed the insurance that my job provides. Um, and so uh, union work is not easy work. It is hard work. Uh, but working people, uh, we know how to work hard. Working class folks, they, they know how to work hard. So uh, I, when I started at UPS, I was a part-timer in the building and loading trucks. And I worked uh, seven days a week. I worked five days at UPS, uh, Monday through Friday. And on Saturday and Sunday, I worked uh, at the inpatient psychiatric hospital um, in the nursing department and, uh, and took care of people that way. And when I had an opportunity to stand up as a steward and to help protect my coworkers at work, um, I, I I jumped on it. I get to do the same sort of, um, I get to listen to that inner voice. I get to follow that calling of protecting people and helping people and lifting people out of uh, really bad circumstances. I get to do that at work every day. And that is super, super powerful. And you don't get that in a non-union job. And so um, I'm, I'm with Gabby. I couldn't go back. Um, also. You know, we were we were applying for government contracts uh, and funding and nonprofit stuff, and that pie kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, I think that when working people come together, that we can make the pie bigger for everybody. Um, so that's my perspective. Um, I, I've been doing package delivery for. Uh, about four years now, um, but I I carry all of that stuff with me when I show up to work every day. And so when I look at um, when I look at the transportation sector that I work in, and I know that we are the leading source of global warming pollution. It makes me wonder what I can do as an employee. It makes me wonder what I can do as a teamster. It makes me wonder what I can do as a member of a community um, that doesn't want my kids to burn up. I mean, it's fucking hot. And, and delivery trucks and tractor trailers are responsible for half of the nitrogen uh, oxide emissions. 60% of all the fine particulate bullshit that's in the air that is cooking. The, the planet. Um, so so I, I guess I approach work uh, even as something that seems as simple as, you know, I'm just uh, a delivery boy. Um, I approach it through 
all of those lenses. And, um, and I'm not the only one. Like, working people are smart. We have a lot of time to think. Uh, you know, uh, Steve can tell you, like, we drive around for 12, 13 hours a day, you know, up until our Department of Transportation maximum, because that's where the company has us work a lot of times. Um, we, we have a lot of time to think about these things and, and think about what a better world could look like, uh, what a better workplace could look like for all of us. And, um, and that's, that's why we're here. That's why we're on this podcast. And that's why we're talking to you. And so thanks for bringing us here. Oh yeah, brother. And well, just, just to, uh, say like, you're triggering my anxiety now that I work at a nonprofit. So thank you for that. <laughs> uh, Steve, how about you, man? Yeah, so uh, I'm Steve. I've been delivering, uh, like, package card delivering for about nine years now, uh, just under. Um, yeah, I, 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 this is the first union job I ever had before this. I was retail management. I was in recruiting. Um, and I finally got to join UPS and I was, it was a weird path. I went straight into package car. A lot of people don't do that. A lot of people go inside the building and I was a lucky member who went straight into delivering in a hundred degree heat right away. Right. But, um, yeah, my journey is like before UPS, I didn't know honestly what union work was like, and it sounds weird. Um, my, my father has always been in business, uh, always been like, um, CFO, CEO stuff, kind of like treasury, everything like that. And I, I knew of unions, like I've heard the word, but I never knew the type of work it was. I never knew how much protection you had with the union and how much they could actually is helpful for like every day, people like us, everyday working people. And, um, like I said, been with UPS nine years, um, would change that for the world. I love the people I work with. It's literally when you get put in situations like we've been put in, especially over the pandemic and everything, you become closer to these people. You want to do better for these people you want us to have a safe work environment you want us to be able to come home every day and not worry about like oh was did, did i drink enough water even though i had a gallon of water at work today <laughs> like it's you it's kind of like touching on zach's thing like we're here because we wanted we want people to hear our thoughts and like see where we're coming from and that we are regular people but we do a very hard job and the union is there to protect us and we have to get the word out about that Hell yeah. Well, I mean, like, and let's let's drill down on that. Right. Because I think it's one of those things that people know in the back of their heads. But like climate change itself, we try to not focus on as much as possible. I don't know. Everyone has their different reasons. Maybe we just got too much shit we're worrying about in our own lives. Maybe we don't want to, like, recognize our complicity in this and, and feel guilty, you know, about the workers who are delivering our packages while dripping sweat and staggering up to our doors. Right. You know, cap capitalism is a brutal system that, you know, like uh, forces all of us to act out our own inhumanities. Right. You know, so like for whatever reason, um, I think this has been an issue that um, a lot of us have sort of pushed under the rug, right? Like what exactly workers like yourselves go through in, in brutal summer heat conditions like what we've been experiencing this year. And, you know, I can just say speaking for myself, um, I got my own crash course in that about 10 years ago, right? All my life in Southern California, right? Driving around Orange County, driving from Orange County to L.A. County and back. Um, you know, there are these, there are these massive beige buildings uh, like festooning the freeways, right? If you're driving up the 60, you're driving up the five, you just thought you just see these things all over the place. And as a kid, I never really knew what was in those buildings. I just knew that they were there, right? They were part of the, of the background. Then I ended up working at one of those, right? And uh, it was a warehouse, right? And it was hot as shit. It was Southern California. Uh, there was no air conditioning in these massive, you know, warehouses. Um, they're like, you know, made out of metal. So it's like a working in a microwave. You would actually go outside in the blistering heat to cool off. Right. So like, you know, I and I guess in that way, for a small time, you know, I was part of the supply chain that you all uh, are very much a part of and keep running. Right. Because we would be, um, you know, tagging, stacking, wrapping and loading pallets onto trucks that would then ship off yada, yada, yada. Anyway, the point being, 
is that it was hot as shit in there. Um, all of us were, you know, constantly dripping sweat. I did see people, um, kind of, we didn't call it that, you know, like, but, but like clearly suffering from heat exhaustion. Um, and the thing that, that really upsets me thinking about it now was not just that, you know, we were subjected to that as were workers in countless other types of warehouses like that, as were the workers like yourselves who were delivering those packages to people in Southern California, but uh, but what what upsets me is thinking about it. It reminds me of like when I played football in high school in Southern California. Like, I mean, just, you know, this is not PC, but just, you know, to give people, you know, a, a sense like the saying was like waters for pussies. Right. You know, and and um, if, if we were doing two a day practices in the brutal summer, August heat and, you know, like you wanted to get a drink of water. Uh, there was this dumb fucking, you know, hyper masculine bullshit where you, you know, if you if you didn't drink water, you were more tough. It, you know, guys were throwing up like that's fucking stupid. Pardon it's my so stupid. It's so it's stupid. So stupid. That's some crazy so stupid. teenage boy stuff. It is. And, you know, and people <laughs> died like every year there were kids like myself who would die from heat exhaustion. And I think finally. The, the the state collectively was like, okay, this is bad and dumb and, and unnecessary. But I think even the reason I bring it up is that in the warehouse, there was even that sense, right? A lot yes. of the folks had been in prisons. Yes. A lot of the folks were, you know, tough, you know, um, dudes. And like, there still was that stigma about speaking up about the horrible conditions we were working in. And so it's, it's a, it's, it seems to be like, uh, this, uh, machismo, like toxic masculinity, bullshit yeah um I, I i remember that from two a days playing football here in oklahoma and um and it was uh you know no you just push through it you just push through it and as drivers we do that all the time like when you're out there in that heat you are going nuts from it you know uh your your body temperature's high uh you're you're not sweating um, you're red, you're hot, your pulse is just pumping, you're busy, you're confused. Um, and, uh, you know, you should drink some fucking water, <laughs> but the message that you get from, you know, either the other kids on your team or management or this internalized BS is that push through it and keep going. Uh, and you'll be fine. But some people are, are not fine. And that's why it's important to have these conversations like this, because some people are not fine. Uh, we have underlying health issues. I've got an autoimmune disease. Like we, um, there, there are lots of things that make us people and that make us workers. Those things do not go away when we enter the company gates. And, um, yeah, so pushing through it and and not drinking water because it's not a macho thing to do. It's not a safe thing to do either. <laughs> right. And and I mean, I guess, you know, I want to be to be very clear. The reason that I, I mentioned that, right, is not to put this on the workers, right? The the you know, UPS and the employers are the ones who are subjecting, you know, workers to these conditions. I say it because we want to acknowledge what you what you just said, Zach, is that um, for folks who are maybe listening to this and who think that this is just part of the job, it's not like you ju you don't have to go through this. You shouldn't have to go through this. And it's OK to speak up and say, like, this sucks, like this is dangerous. And, and you know, like, I, I guess we just want to, like, make it clear up front that, you know, it's OK to to to, you know, <laughs> not want to be subjected to this. And so building on that, um, I was wondering if we can go back around the table and just talk about what that looks that work looks like on a day-to-day -day basis um working in the summer as a ups driver what maybe folks on the customer side see or don't see um that y'all are going through like could you just i guess sort of like paint us a picture of what working in that kind of heat uh whether you're in the southwest mid-atlantic or oklahoma like what that entails Absolutely. Okay. People need to understand that UPS, um, especially package delivery is a different job than like any job that you've probably ever done. Um, I talked to some of my friends and, you know, they can stop working and look at their phone for like five minutes, 
sometimes 20 minutes, even like one minute at UPS in package delivery, you cannot stop for longer. You like, you really can't stop period. Um, but no worker, no, no delivery driver is ever going to stop for longer than like one minute because we have over 200 sensors inside the engine of our truck, the track us. We have, um, we're starting to get cameras inside our, the cab of our trucks, the track us management, 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 <coughs> Sorry, I'm talking too fast because I'm angry. Uh, management is sitting in their AC offices, watching every single thing that you do. You're trained in the 340 method, which is 340 different things to describe your job, exactly how you're supposed to do it. Um, I mean, if we were in person, I could show you, we could all show you like exactly the methods for like how to pick up a box, how to walk up to the house, how to get in your truck, how to pull away from a curb. Um, it's, it's extreme, you know, like it's a very high stress job. Um, um, and there are so many rules. Uh, and they, if you, uh, you know, if you start to, you know, care about your safety, uh, you know, and like they will, they, they'll do like liability, right? Like they'll act like they care about your safety. They'll tell you to drink water. They'll tell you all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, but at the end of the day, like the way that this job functions does not work for human beings. Working in 107 degree heat does not work. Like does not work for human beings. Um, working in a truck that does not have AC or ventilation in the back, where it gets to over 130 degrees, doesn't work for human beings. And not being able to stop. I mean, I know they will say like you can stop if you're really hot. You know, like take a break. But like you know that the next day that they're going to harass you and ask you, um, you know, why did you stop? blah, blah, blah. And you say like, oh, you know, I was feeling really hot. And, you know, like you legally have the right to stop working in unsafe working conditions. Um, so if you need to take a break from the heat, then you're allowed to do that. Um, but then they're going to try to push you to like clock out for your lunch or like clock out for your break. So like, that's what it's like working for UPS. And it's insane. Um, I will say that like people drink a lot of water in my experience, like working in the Southwest, um, like people drink a lot of water. They're pretty good at like, you know, Gatorade and stuff like that. But then another thing, like the, just the stress of the job is like, people don't want to break off to go to a gas station because they're afraid of harassment. Um, they're, they're trying to get off work on time because it's still really hot at like 6 PM, you know? So like, if you can get off work early, it's even better. Uh, and I also, I want to say, uh, we really can't forget too about our, and I'm glad you brought it up, Max, our inside warehouse employees, the part-timers and the combo workers. Um, when I was part-time, I saw workers pass out. Um, I saw workers who had to sit down because they were like very hot. I saw workers throw up. Um, and actually when I was part-time, we started documenting um, all instances of heat sickness as us part-timers. Um, and then we, uh, we started to document all instances of heat sickness. Uh, we started a campaign to get fans in the building. We made buttons. We, we, we got like $10 an hour and like, we like ordered buttons. It was like a whole paycheck for me, <laughs> but, um, we, uh, we made a petition and we stood in front of the building at UPS. Um, and we had everybody sign the petition. We had over like 250 signatures and we, um, we had like a ragtag group of rank and filers confront the boss and tell our manager and, um, like plant engineering and like the building manager, uh, we said, Hey, we want to have meetings with you, um, as part-timers. And they were like, who does that? <laughs> like, I'm not gonna. They're like, I barely even want to meet with the union. Why would I meet with some part timers? Like, you guys don't even have a union rep. <laughs> but we did. We forced them. We forced them to have meetings with us, um, and we talked to them about like all the people who were sick. We showed them the petition. We would not. We wouldn't let up. We like made. Um, I think we made stickers too. We had people wear the buttons, and then we won our demands. We won all of our demands, and we got fans installed in the building. So that's the difference that you can have in a union job is that, uh, well, one, you have a legally binding contract that we negotiate every five years. Um, but two, um, you have, uh, you know, you have the, um, I mean, you have the legal right to, you know, organize on behalf of your coworkers. It's called concerted activity, um, in any job union or not, but you know, like in a union job, you really have it because they can't like actually fire you for it, you know, because in a non-union job, they might say like, you know, you're fired for wearing the wrong shoes today. Um, but like you have worker power in a union job and you can, or you can change your contract. So like maybe we can get some climate change language in AC ventilation, get more fans in the building for part-timers in the warehouse. I don't see why we can't have like AC in the warehouse or two, you know, we can, um, do, uh, we can do actions outside 
outside the building. Um, we can do petitions. We can do everything it takes uh, to make sure that our workers are safe, that this is a good job, and that our our people aren't dying on the job or they're not passing out on the job. I, I want to piggyback on some of that because, like, UPS is is the the leading company in um and logistics it's a global transportation and logistics company uh it 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 sets the pace for all the other companies right um and we like that as teamsters we love that we're working for for the number one company in the world uh that that is doing this sort of work uh we we know that we are a critical component of uh of the companies uh of our customer supply chains um and that gives us a lot of pride in in the work that we do i mean we deliver your vaccines um we we deliver people's medicine and their food uh we deliver people's wine like all of that stuff we deliver pets to the pet stores I don't know if people know that. Like that stuff is in the back of my package car. I am uh I'm I'm taking lizards and stuff uh to the pet store. I'm taking people's snakes and their fish and their coral to their house. So that stuff is back there in 150 degrees too. Um UPS is is number one in this game. Um and they've got an opportunity to to have a environmentally sustainable and uh, economically viable way to keep their workforce healthy um, and continuing to bring those big profits in. Like we want to deliver for our stakeholders, for the shareholders, um, like uh, being, being in, in Oklahoma um, and uh, Knowing how important environmental stewardship is, um, you know the 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 dust bowl happened here. You know, I, we we've seen what environmental degradation looks like. Um, that's 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 my background. That's my people's background, and so seeing um, seeing big organizations um, or disorganizations uh not like address these issues head on uh is 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 a problem they've got the money to invest in the systems the procedures the equipment the operating processes all of these things to to keep us safe to keep us safe while we're at work um and to continue generating all these great shareholder um profits like our we we make a lot of money for this company the folks inside who were sweating and working hard they make a lot of money for this company the number one logistics company in the world and amazon who is not there but they want to be there they invested years ago uh a few million dollars to put air conditioning inside all of their hubs so amazon has air conditioning in their buildings i know because i deliver to dok4 i deliver to one of the amazon buildings and when i want to take a break and and sort my ups package car I go inside the Amazon <laughs> building. I open up all the doors. I let all the heat escape my car. And I go from 130 degrees to 88 degrees in a matter of minutes. Wow. That is something powerful. The folks That's working so in. Isn't that, isn't that insane? <laughs> Thanks, Bezos. <laughs> <It's like laughs> Thank you. Something good. <laughs> So uh, I'm not so sure about sending Jeff Bezos to space, but those Bezos bucks put air conditioning in their hubs. And, um, you know, we we have folks sitting in our executive suite right now in air conditioning, and they may or may not be listening to this podcast. I really hope they are. But I want 
to make sure that they know that Amazon, their competition, their competition has air conditioning and we deserve it too. The the idea that um, giving us air conditioning that it's not it's not going to be efficient because we open the doors and we're in and out the 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 capital market assumptions here the long term estimates of financial risk and reward they've got to reflect the reality of climate change and the notion that investing in our safety as drivers is going to be a net cost to the company's bottom line to their body line that's bull hockey man like UPS can avoid climate related economic deterioration they can improve their risk asset returns with a green transition to sustainable technologies they can lead the way they can partner with the teamsters to provide a healthy and safety workplace uh, resilient supply chain networks that will lower inflation and deliver returns for investors. I mean, we're we're in a global pandemic. There's economic uncertainty. There's social unrest, and this company has an opportunity to come to the table with its workers, to come to the table with our union and make it better. And I hope that they do it. Yeah, I mean, just building off of what these two guys or these two have been saying, it's like what people don't understand is like one thing whenever we say like, hey, maybe air conditioning or better ventilation in the cargo would be amazing, right? And what you'll hear from management would be, oh, it actually wouldn't be, it wouldn't be helpful to you guys. It wouldn't make that big of a difference. And then what people don't understand is my, I personally drive 40 minutes to work and or, I'm sorry, 40 minutes from the hub to my route. And then when I'm done with my route, I drive, depending on traffic, 45 to an hour back to the hub. For them to say, hey, yeah, the air conditioning wouldn't work then. Like 45 minutes of having air conditioning on me after a day in 110 degree like heat index, that wouldn't help. That's what I just find. Like, like it's just insane. Like it doesn't make, like for them to be able to say these words and just to know that they're lying is, is crazy to me. My friend works for FedEx drives the exact same model of truck that we do and he has a Cena's truck and he says it does make a difference. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and like and that's and that's what's funny is like they just say the things because they're like, oh like like they just think we'll just let it go. Like we're we're done letting these things go. We're done like I think uh in my hub we had another driver go to the emergency room last week to be all in all honesty. But they won't they'll be like, oh it was a stomach thing. I'm like or it was heat related because he couldn't sweat anymore and all these things but it's just like oh nope couldn't be that right and i like one of the biggest things i try to let people know is like yeah like when i'm driving with my doors open it, the wind does feel good like i can deal with some of these things the problem is when you open the cargo and it's 115 to 130 degrees in there and they're like oh there's the smallest little ventilation thing and you're like nothing goes in there there's nothing helps get into that thing like it's it literally does nothing to like make anything cooler it doesn't do anything to like like fix the situation that we're in like i said um and i wanted to reinforce like this whole like oh they say you can take a break but they don't exactly mean that they mean oh like take 10 minutes of your lunch break take 10 minutes of uh your paid union leave uh or break sorry um but like what's funny is they don't want you to have extra overtime because we can grieve excessive overtime over three days at UPS. So it's like, I was like, Gabriella touched on, it's like, oh, you take a break. Um, why are you going slower today? Like, you're going to have a meeting in the morning. Like, what, why, you had this many stops. Why did it take you longer? Oh, the fact that it's a 110 degree heat index has nothing to do with how fast I go. I guess I should work the same amount of speed in this rather than that. Um, yeah, like, I mean, these two have touched on basic points and I just want to give my thoughts on that at the same time. I wanted to touch on one real quick thing that Zach talked about. I was delivering animals. My first week on the job by myself, uh, I was delivering crickets to pet, uh, pet Petco or PetSmart or whatever it was. And another box falls on top of the crickets and I had a thousand crickets in my truck oh, shit. <laughs> all day. <laughs> it was the worst. I just wanted to end on that part. I had the, the same thing happen with uh, mealworms. A box of mealworms broke open on my shelf. And you know, those shelves are made of metal. 
and it's a hundred fit. You can bake cookies on our shelves. And so these living things are cooking on my shelves and I can smell them in the back of the package car for days. And, and, you know, um, the, there's there's not enough staff to to work in our car wash to get these th- the package cars really clean you know and they're rushed out uh, our folks inside the hub they know what it's like uh, they don't want you to have overtime and um, but they they let you work three and a half hours a day and they want you to do X number of package cars a day and um, it's just a lot uh, I think. I, I wanted to 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 uh, jump in here because you you talked about like opening the bulkhead door and all that heat that comes out hits you in the face. It's like opening an oven. Um, and uh, you know that we we won fans in the last contract. Um, what a crazy thing that you have to win a fan to keep you cool. What a crazy thing that you have to win that, that you got to fight for that. But, you know, we, we have to fight for every dime, every dollar up at, you know, at, at our workplaces, um, which is why collective action is so important. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm looking at this. Boom. How to say, stay safe when extreme heat threatens. This is from FEMA, right? And one thing that, that they have on this FEMA shit, sheet, shit, I'm sorry, <laughs> Freudian slip, uh, it says, do not use electric fans when the temperature outside is more than 95 degrees. You could increase the risk of heat-related illness. Fans create airflow and a false sense of comfort, but do not reduce body temperature. And that's one thing that I want to mention. We The, the fans, they, they will cool us down, and a breeze is super important. It's great that I get to drive around with my doors open. That breeze, that airflow is super Super important. But my day begins when I leave the building at 9 a.m. And some days I am out there 12, 13 hours. And the back of that package car builds up very, very, very quickly to over 100 degrees. So I'm, I'm, I'm over 95 degrees like i'm i'm in hot temperature all day it's not you just you step in and you step out um there is metabolic heat that your body generates from motion uh, just the basic stuff that helps keep you alive um but then the fact that we exert so much physical energy to move all of this stuff all of this medicine, all of this food, all of this toilet paper, all of this stuff that our customers need, that metabolic heat combines with environmental heat, so uh, temperature, sunlight, humidity, and that stuff equals your core worker temperature. And uh, when that temperature gets too high, it doesn't matter how much water you drink. That helps. But it doesn't bring down that that internal temperature quick enough. And uh, I learned that when my doctor told me that the symptoms I had last week were the symptoms of a heat stroke. That uh, that when I was cramping and my hands were uh, uh, unable to open, uh, when I fell against the wall and I couldn't figure out how to get up off of it. She told me that's a heat stroke. What you have is your body is breaking down the proteins that you need to stay alive. So that's what was happening to me. And I didn't know it until after the fact. Um, And there are a lot of people inside our building and inside our package cars. Uh, There are people in your neighborhood, in your community right now. In package cars, out on the street, in front of your house, and they're having these problems. Um, so we, we as teamsters, uh, as workers, as people, uh, we we hope that you guys will say something about it. 
um, and that that we can push this company to do the right thing um, by the communities that they operate in. Yeah, I guess, uh, I mean, building off on Zach, it's like, when you think about how long we are outside on a daily basis, um, like, uh, I clock in 8.45 every morning, and like, uh, hopefully I'll be home by 7.45, 8. Like, that's just how it is sometimes, and like, some days it's even longer. And the fact that like, by the time you get in your car, that's already in a hot building, and then you leave the hot building to get in direct sunlight and just start cooking you, <laughs> it's, it's, not and it's not a healthy whatsoever it's not like nothing about that says safe nothing about that says comfortable nothing about that says anything like helpful for us to do our jobs to be the workers that we're supposed to be and all we're asking for is a little relief a little help and i don't think that's too much to ask for sometimes people go out with you know about 300 stops it's not uncommon to have that high amount of stops uh, my route would go out with 200. Uh, after the pandemic, they really slammed my route with even more stops than I could handle. And then, you know, that would have like 200 stops. That's not 200 packages total. Um, it's like about 260 packages uh, because some houses have multiple packages. And when you look inside the truck, um, if you ever have the great pleasure to look inside the inside of a UPS truck in the morning. It is packed front to back. Don't do it. Um, Don't do there it. There is no way to walk through it. It is packed good. all the way to the <laughs> ceiling. It's bad. Um, it's real bad. And then, um, so when you're when you have that many packages inside of your truck, naturally you're not going to be able to find them um, immediately. So you're actually going to spend a lot of time in the back of the truck. Um, when it is 130 degrees in the back of the truck, there's no airflow. Um, you're back there. You're trying really, there would be times where I was trying very hard to find the package. I would be back there for maybe 45 seconds. Um, and I had to tell myself, like, I cannot be back here because if I pass out in the back of this truck, nobody's going to find me. Nobody's going to come up to me. No one's going to look inside my package car to find out if I'm okay. You know, like it's probably going to take a few hours for management to even figure out if anything went wrong. Um, my best hope would be that somebody wanted to rob the package car <laughs> and came in and saw that I was back there. You know, like they just decided to walk in. It's really dangerous. Um, so there's that. Uh, my, my best friend actually at work, he was trying to pass the probation period at UPS um, and just the standard that they had them in or uh, the standards that they have them at to get past what we call packet, the probation period for new drivers. It, it's just ridiculous, especially in the summer heat. Um, and he actually ended up uh, throwing up outside of a hospital and I believe his wife was outside of the hospital with him. He was on the job and he was feeling so sick. Like there was something very, very wrong. Um, in management, I came and met him outside of the hospital, outside of the ER. And he was like throwing up and they told him, please, they're like, don't go in the ER. Don't go in the ER. Like, we'll take you to the, we'll take you to Concentra, the, um, the work doctor. Um, I've been to that work doctor. We all have stories about the work doctor. It's, uh, a complete bullshit doctor that does not help you. Um, he's, his wife like laid down the line and so did he, and he was like, no, we're going to go in this hospital. We think that he needs to go in this hospital. Um, they went in there. He was suffering from kidney failure. Um, and he was hospitalized overnight. Uh, they had to give him like, tons of fluids. I don't know if like the, the, the work doctor even have those materials, you know, like when I, when I hurt myself, they actually they didn't even have like a brace to give me, uh, when I went there once. But, um, yeah, no, just the, uh, the, uh, the standards are so high. Um, and well, sorry, one more thing I actually wanted to talk about is we're kind of touching on like, uh, you know, it's not just the heat of the job, but you know, also like you gotta think of like the sun exposure, right? And like skin cancer, that's a huge deal. And like the sun also just burns you alive, but two as well is, um, uh, wildfires. Like we had like last summer we had so many wildfires in the West and like the air would blow, um, like from state over into our state and the, uh, where we were, like the air would be trapped, um, because of the geography of like where we live or where I live. Um, and you'd be working outside sometimes when we would have the worst air quality in the world because of the wildfires. And it almost like, like that photo from, um, a couple years ago in Oregon with the wildfires and it was completely red. Like workers have to keep working in that. You know, like UPS workers, FedEx workers, mail carriers, et cetera. Um, 
Like we need, like we, with climate change coming up with the, you know, wildfires are going to get crazy. Um, you know, the, the weather is going to get more insane. It's not only going to get hotter, but we're going to get like crazier, um, weather storms, like blizzards, you know, ex- like excessive heat, et cetera. Like we need to, like, honestly, we need lives for like working class people who are outside. Like there, there needs to be like some kind of law that like you shouldn't have to work outside when the air quality is that bad because like the government recommends that people don't even go outside. Like people who don't even have health con- like conditions, like at it, first it's the health conditions, the elderly and everything like that. And then they're like, nobody should go outside. It was like, okay, then why am I working 12 hours a day doing physical labor? You're telling people not to even do physical activity outside. And like, this is my job. Um, and like with the postal workers as well, like mail carriers, like my husband's a mail carrier. Um, that's like, I mean, they're working for the government. Like the government needs to do something about their job. Um, by the way, shout out. I know I was talking for a while, but like shout out to mail carriers because we have really difficult and hot jobs, but for mail carriers who deliver out of their trucks and they don't, um, they don't get out and do walking routes. Um, they have to keep their windows up and their doors shut and they don't have any AC or airflow at all. Like they can't roll down their windows because the mail could fly out or something, you know, that job is very, very hot. Um, so we, we have a shared issue with our, our mail carrier and they haven't had updated trucks in like 50 years. So, and, and when they are trying to get their trucks updated, they've got, political appointees who are trying to keep electric cars from air conditioning happening. You know, this uh, Louis DeJoy cat that, that is in charge of the postal workers um, is just running the, the service into the ground. Like the postal service is older than the country. You know, I, I, I really appreciate um, our letter carriers um, and I, I want to mention that, uh, the, the postal workers, they're unionized workers too. You know, we've got the, uh, the, uh, NALC, APWU, there, there are unions for, for, uh, postal workers and they are super, super important. Um, our, our working conditions at UPS and at the Postal Service are, are super, super difficult, but um, but they are made better because we have a union and we have recourse when something wrong happens. That does not happen at Amazon. That does not happen at FedEx. They are contractors. They are subject to at-will employment. If the boss wants to fire you and put his brother-in-law in that job, he can. You don't have any rights. Um, but you know, when you have a union, um, you, you you've got just cause. You know, they can't just get rid of you because whatever. Um, I think that bringing up our our letter carriers, bringing up um, our laborers, folks who are working outside all the time is super, super important because this is not just us at UPS. It's not just uh, us as working people with the Postal Service. It's not just us, you know, working anywhere. um, It's all of us. Uh, most most heat related illnesses occur because of overexposure to heat uh, and over exercising. And we both were uh, once upon a time they called us industrial athletes. I don't know if you guys remember any of that stuff. Industrial athletes, and it's true. Like we we work like athletes. We are trained uh, to to have the physicality of athletes out there. But, um, you know, during the, the 10 years from 1999 to 2009, uh, an average of 658 people died each year from heat in the United States. Like that numbers, that, that, that was what, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, you know, that number is just set to, to go up. Uh, we know that folks who live in um, urban areas have a greater risk from prolonged heat than those in rural areas because of the the 
uh, heat island effect, all that concrete reflects all this heat at you. You know, when you are delivering in a neighborhood that is in town versus delivering in a neighborhood in the country, it feels differently. And um, and so we, we, we've got to do something. We've got to do something all over this country because there is a, a combination of the heat going up and the humidity going up. It's just it's. People are getting heat cramps, they're getting heat exhaustion, they're getting heat stroke, and, and they're they're dying out there. And um, and we're gonna see more and more of it as the climate catastrophe gets worse. Um, it's already happening. Um, there are practical things that the company can do to invest in their workers, to invest in the infrastructure. They can put air conditioning in their buildings. They can put roof-mounted air conditioning or exhaust vents in the back of the package cars to draw that humid, hot air out. They're on RVs. Like, they exist. People have a need for this stuff already, and there are solutions for it already. And the money is already there. So do we invest in stock buybacks? Or do we invest in the core thing that makes our company profitable the company had this has a decision to make carol tomey and the people who are on the board they have a decision to make and our customers when they have a choice of who is shipping their stuff they have a decision to make too and i want them to make that decision with all of the information And so that's why this podcast is really important because they may not have all the information. That's the assumption I'm going to make. I'm going to tell you it's hot and people are dying and you can do something about it. So there's the information. Please do something about it. Please. We need you to like we're, 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 we're in your neighborhoods. We're in your communities. We're delivering to your schools. We're delivering to your pharmacies. We bring you your food. We bring you your medicine. We bring you your wine so you can have brunch. I love brunch. You know, there's nothing wrong with brunch. So, like, um, if if you were getting packages that are too hot to touch, think about it. That has been in the back of a package car for maybe 10 hours. So have I. So has Steve. So as Gabriella and, you know, there, there are 330,000 Teamsters at UPS. We're sick of it. We're done with this stuff. It's not okay. We're over it. And um, so we're looking for victory in 2023. And we are working towards that. Um, and, and part of that is conversations like this. Uh, conversations with Steve and Gabriella and Max, so thanks for bringing us to this table, bro. No, of course. And I mean, I, I yeah, can't thank y'all enough for giving folks that vital information. Um, and yeah, I hope people at, at the company hear this too so that, you know, they can really understand, you know, the human stakes and the day-to-day realities of what's going on here. And, and that, you know, everyone listening to this who has ever mailed or received a package, right? This is something we all need to care about and we all have a role in in sort of pushing for better working conditions for folks like steve gabriella zach and everyone around the country and again just to really underscore you know what we're the, what we're looking at you know because this isn't going away i guess the, you know we can't be we can't give into this like magical thinking that it's like oh it's you know it's been hot in the past it'll go away like Again, we we just had a study published like last week showing uh, the emergence of a, quote, extreme heat belt, all basically covering the entire Midwest and the Plains states. Right. Um, And some people may nonchalantly be like, well, I don't live there. It's not my problem. Well, a lot of people do live there. A lot of people work there. A lot of people are just going to be expected to deal with it. And one note that I wanted to make um, as we kind of round the final turn, because I could talk to you guys forever, but I know I got to let you go. And I want us to round out by talking about that contract fight. 
talking about what is being done or what can be done to get air conditioning in these trucks, to get, you know, better uh, uh, air conditioning in the warehouses, to overall, you know, like take better care of the folks who are keeping the supply chain going. So I want us to round out by talking about that. But one thing I really wanted to underscore, right, because we've already acknowledged that, like, this goes far beyond um, package carriers, right? Uh, right now, farm workers in California are marching the length of the state. Um, to go to Governor Gavin Newsom's office in Sacramento to demand their rights, you know, to organize collectively, to bargain collectively, to improve their working conditions. You know, Gabby mentioned that horrifying picture uh, uh, from Oregon la a, a year or two ago um, of like a UPS truck sitting on a street when the entire sky was red. I also remember looking at pictures from my home state of farm workers in the field while the mountains behind them were literally on fire like that that shit happens all the time and we just what are we just going to sacrifice all these workers and just if they died like you know uh we'll get new ones like what the fuck are we talking about here and the thing that i wanted to underscore is we actually did a bonus episode a few months back um, that I thought was really important, where we talked about the Supreme Court ruling that basically overruled OSHA's ability um, to push through, uh, uh, I think this was in reference to the uh, vaccine mandates. Essentially, we're not going to get into the politics of vaccine mandates, but I want people to understand that the ruling itself that the Supreme Court offered said that COVID-19 is a generalized condition it exists everywhere now, and so it cannot be considered a workplace issue. Now, like what that means, again, if, you, if you're someone who's opposed to vaccine mandates and you thought that was a victory, great. If you're someone who's for vaccine mandates and you thought that was a loss, again, I don't want to get mired in that. I want us to just understand that the ruling itself laid the groundwork for something really sinister regarding what we're talking about here, right? Because if you can say that COVID protections are not uh, OSHA's jurisdiction to enforce at workplaces naturally follows from that ruling is that you could say climate conditions are also not working conditions because it's a generalized thing. Thereby, employers are not required to make any like uh, a, a special sort of protections or whatnot for their workers as climate catastrophe gets worse. And so this, like, I wanted to mention that because um, y'all have mentioned the importance of getting contract language to address this. Everyone is looking forward to next year with the massive contract fight. So I wanted to just uh, on a final round, ask about that, right? Like um, what can we do to fix this problem and, and protect workers who are enduring these brutal heat conditions that are only going to get worse as climate change gets worse. Um, you know, what should folks listening know about the upcoming contract fight uh, at UPS and what most importantly can they do to support y'all and uh, you know, your fellow workers around the country? Okay. Um, Real quick, just like what the public can do and uh, just like some tips for like beating the heat. And then I'll talk about the contract. Uh, what the public can do, give us water. That's really nice. Thank you. Please give us water <laughs> and ice. Uh, what workers can do, guys, like take your breaks. Like take your breaks, drink lots of water, drink electrolytes. Um, I don't know if like fans work great. They don't work great where I'm from, but do what you have to do to stay safe. We don't want you to die. Um, talking about the contract fight and what we need to do. Well, uh, one thing that we have not touched on yet was that on June 25th, um, a UPS driver named Esteban Chavez uh, Jr. died in Los Angeles from overheat um, or heat exhaustion, whatever the technical term is. Um, and that's really sparked a... Yeah, rip little Stevie. That has sparked a huge fight across the country to get fans in the trucks, but also not only fans, AC, you know, something to help us beat this heat. Because uh, honestly, like fans are not enough. Like some people are fighting for fans, fans work some places, but we need more than that. Um, and then in July, uh, a driver in Arizona in Scottsdale passed out on a ring doorbell camera in front of somebody's house. Um, and I mean, I think a lot of people have seen that video. If you haven't, uh, you should Google it, uh, look up UPS driver, Arizona collapses, heat, 
Um, so after those two incidents happened, um, the Teamsters came out with a statement. Um, and there's also been a lot of movement across the country uh, to fight back against the heat um, and, you know, get have like a safe working condition, have safe job. Um, so if people don't know, we actually have new administration, um, new leadership in the Teamsters Union, Sean O'Brien and Fred Zuckerman of the Teamsters United Slate won in um, 2021 and they took office in March of 2022. Um, so UPS is gearing up for a very important contract fight in 2023. Our contract expires July 31st, 2023. And the Teamsters United slate that is now in leadership at the Teamsters Union, Sean O'Brien wants to take on UPS like never before. Um, and we are putting all of our most important issues on the table. So in the next year, we're preparing to fight and to win, uh, to win a great contract for our members um, and to tackle a lot of the issues that we've been seeing um, in the last few years, get rid of concessions that we've seen um, in the last uh, contract negotiations um, in decades past. Uh, and one of the top issues is, you know, heat relief. Uh, so on July 20th, and you all can look this up, it's too long for me to read, I think, as we're wrapping up. Um, but on July 20th, the Teamsters came out with a statement. Uh, Teamsters demand UPS protect drivers amid record heat. And they have a list of, uh, you know, demands that UPS takes, um, you know, like providing uh, cool neck towels, PPE, uh, you know, installing a fan, ice machines, hiring more full-time drivers to relieve the to relieve the amount of work we have. That's a huge one. That is absolutely huge. Um, but so check that out. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, locals across the country who are also uh, partaking in a campaign called um, what's it called again? Uh, it's like surveillance. Well, I'll pause for a second so they can edit it. Okay, there's a okay. surveillance, not safety. Oh shit! Yeah, no. um, safety, not safety, not safety. surveillance. Yeah, we want safety, safety not, not surveillance, not the other way around. That shit's fucked up. We want safety, not surveillance. There we go. <laughs> um. So there's a lot of locals across the country who are partaking in a campaign called Safety Not Surveillance because UPS is installing uh, cameras in every single package car uh, so that they can watch us. Uh, and surveil us even more among um, how stressful this job is. Uh, well, you know, I don't know if people know, but the, the UPS trucks we get, they actually come with AC and UPS pays the car, like the manufacturer to take the AC out, you know? So instead of keeping the AC in um, or, you know, spending money to install the AC, we're getting fans installed in our trucks. Um, so people are, you know, they're fighting the fan, they're fighting, sorry, they're fighting the, the cameras, but they're also fighting for heat relief. Um, so there's a lot that we can do. You know, the fight is mainly going to come down to UPS workers and to Teamsters because it's our contract and we can fight for a better contract. Um, you know, the public support, I think, means a lot. And I think, um, you know, when August 1st, 2023 comes around, the first day our contract expires, we might be on strike. Um, who knows what's going to happen, but we need to have the public on our side. And I think the public will be on our side. So if there's anything the public can do, I mean, just help us like with water, you know, think of us, follow our issues in the news on the Teamster website. Um, I can guarantee you in a year, you're going to be talking about the Teamsters uh, and it's going to be really exciting time. So um, just stay up to date on what's going on. We're preparing and we're fighting really hard to take on UPS and win what's best for our members. I am so excited to hear all of that. Um, Gabby, uh, Gabriella, you, you bring such like um, such passion to the table when it comes to talking about this stuff. And um and it's it's really inspiring to me. Um, I think that this company has an opportunity to move our entire economy, to move our world forward by really delivering what really matters, you know, um, a a prosperous and resilient and healthy and safe and equitable uh working environment for people um our our union um 
is is working hard to to make all of this stuff happen but it is a struggle like everything that we get um as working people not only in this country but in every other country and every other system what what we get is what we fight for um no one hands us anything and and that's fine we we we're, as working people we know how to work we know how to work for what we deserve and we are going to work from now until 2023 um, to make sure that our people are taken care of, that these jobs are sustainable for the long term. We have 11.8 million delivery customers every single day. 1.7 million Shipping customers, that's people shipping medicine and shipping your food and shipping all of your stuff. And, and the company uh, says that it's investing in alternative fuel and advanced technologies and all of this stuff. But I'm telling you, on the shop floor, people are not seeing that. We're hearing lots about it. And um, we, we, we can talk about this struggle through a lot of different lenses, um, I, I can speak to the people investing right now, the stuff that uh, is coming in these recent accomplishments and recognitions stuff. We're not seeing it. You guys are maybe getting in your shareholder reports. I get it in my shareholder reports. I, I, I'm a shareholder. I'm a stakeholder in this company. So um, knowing that there's a diverse and global set of stakeholders in this company. Um, and knowing that your workers are your most important set of stakeholders, they have to be. Nothing works without your workers. None of this works. None of your stuff gets delivered. None of this happens without the workers. We do the work. And so you can choose to invest in stock buybacks, or you can choose to invest in the infrastructure that brings all of this money that, that, um, that really moves our economy forward. I think that, that Teamsters drive this economy through our trucking, through our rail, through our ports. Our folks work really hard at all this stuff and uh, empowering workers means that we lower inflation. You know, we're, we're, we're hearing a lot right now, especially um, from the Fed about how workers, uh, they're, they're getting too much. You know, wages are rising and that's why we have inflation. And that, my friends, is bullshit because while company Profit rates go up. We don't see the wages go up at the same, but we see the prices go up. So if you want to lower your prices, you invest in your workers. If you want to take care of your workers who are out, what, what our customers can do, uh, like Gabriella said, is provide us water. You know, give us water. I've got a cooler out on my front porch right now with water and snacks and electrolytes. That stuff's important, but it is not enough and so that's why if you are a customer if you rely on these services to bring you your stuff um please reach out please send an email please let uh the company know how important it is that they take care of the workers who deliver all your stuff let them know and then um let the teamsters know you know, reach out to, to our unions, to our international, to Sean O'Brien, to Fred Zuckerman, to the guys on our executive board. Reach out to your local and ask what you can do to help out because your local, they, they, have, they have stuff. There are places that you can plug in right now to make a difference in your community. So reach out to your local, and um, and if they don't seem to know what's going on yet, you do. 
because you listen to this podcast. So make a plan and suggest it. See what you can do to help out because this is something that affects every single person in this country. And because we're a global system, because we're a global economy, it really affects everybody. And because we're affected all by the current climate catastrophe, it really does affect all of us. So um, we have the largest private sector contract in the entire country. This company and this union have the opportunity to set the path going forward. Will they take it? I really hope they do. Yeah, I mean, I have a good point about the contract coming up, and that is a uh, two-tiered driver system uh, that they have right now. And that's like probably my biggest pet peeve with everything that's going on with UPS as well as the heat that we've been talking about today. But we have regular package car drivers, and then we have 224 drivers. And it's what, what we were told is 224 drivers are going to be people who work in the building and then maybe take out a few things that got left at the building to help out on, like, if something was too big to get into my truck, then maybe another one of these 224 drivers will bring it out. In my hub, every 224 driver, except for maybe one or two, have been doing exactly what I do every day, working nine to 12 hours, not working in the building, working what we do as drivers. And they are, they have no um, they have no protections that we have. They can work the excessive overtime and not grieve it. They can be pushed more than we can. Like They can't be protected like we can. And the UPS knows this and they are abusing this and they are using it against us. They will push these 224s to do more than a regular package car driver because they're paid less because they don't have uh, over excessive overtime protection and they are they can be used like in different ways. They're not being honest about what that job entails and they are making it a lot harder and they're trying to separate regular package car drivers from 224 drivers. They need to be treated the same and that's all in that. This, uh, the, the, the 224 thing that Steve mentions uh, so so that's a contract provision that is uh article 22.4 and for for those of you who are not in the labor movement who who don't know how like a, a labor contract works the the uh the rules are laid out like we've got a contract book we know what to expect the company knows what to expect Everything is laid out for us. Like we negotiate what the terms of our work are with our employers. And so um, Article 22.4 allows us to, um, the, the, the point of the article was to al allow the, the company to create more full-time jobs. Um, but, but they've exploited this thing They've exploited this contract provision to push people faster and harder with less protections, with less pay. There was no reason why someone doing the same work should get paid less, why they should not have the same contractual protections. There was no reason why anybody should get paid less for doing the same job. So I, I am so excited to see an administration that um, is, is saying, we're not going to do that. This is not going to happen from, near, from here on out. So, uh, so we'll see you in 2023. This upcoming year is the year that UPS workers are fighting back more than ever. And we have a real opportunity to take on UPS and potentially go on strike on August 1st, 2023. And if that happens, whatever happens in the next year, what us UPS Teamsters have the real potential to bring back a lot of life into the labor movement. So I think like following our fight, following what's going on is very important. Um, and if you are a UPS -er or you are a Teamster, uh, you know, get involved. This is the most important time in decades since 1997, I would say. Uh, and we need all hands on deck. So, um, you know, stay up to date, uh, get involved. A lot of locals are doing actions across the country. If you need anything, if you need any help uh, or, you know, need to be pointed in the right direction, you can, you know, tweet at me. My Twitter is at UPS underscore Teamster. Um, I want all hands on deck.